Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. Welcome back to my mansion. I wish you could have picked a better night to come visit, though. Strange things have been happening around here. See, living in a supposedly haunted house sure has a lot of disadvantages. So far, I've had creepy messages scribbled on the walls, objects appearing in places I didn't leave them, weird ghost girls in my bathroom mirror, and the inability to remember whatever I do after midnight. But it gets even weirder. I recently made a video about a Scooby-Doo Flash game, but I spaced out toward the end. See, at the 13 minute and 36 second mark, everything goes blank. That's when the clock struck midnight while I was recording. I can't remember anything that happened during this, so I'm gonna do a little experiment. I have one Scooby-Doo Flash game left to review, so this time, I'm gonna record it with an additional camera and see what happens. You ready for this? Let's get on with it. In the early 2000s, numerous Scooby-Doo games were being released on the Cartoon Network website. Among them was a trilogy of games that were in mostly the same format. They were three or four parts long, with fully voiced cutscenes and a variety of mini-games. So far, we've looked at Haunts for the Holidays and Horror of the High Seas. But there's one more we still need to look at. Mayan Monster Mayhem, often mistakenly called Mayan Mayhem, is very similar to Horror of the High Seas, but has some of its own original aspects. Now these games are notorious for providing players with a bit of a challenge. For example, Haunts for the Holidays made me cry for three weeks straight. Horror of the High Seas wasn't as hard, but you really had to use your brain to figure out certain parts. So let's see how Mayan Monster Mayhem holds up. The first part is called River Rapids Rampage. We can either play a regular game or a timed one. No thanks to that second one. It takes me four years to figure out anything puzzle related. Let's just do the regular mode. So then we get our opening cutscene. I'm sorry, boys. I don't think I can help you. He did it. But Mr. Culpepper, sir, doesn't your company make five skull fire sauce? Well, he did it, he true, did it, he Shaggy. did it, he did it, he did it. Okay, so anyway, Scooby and Shaggy are speaking to this totally not suspicious dollar store Doug Dimmodome, who runs a hot sauce company. His name is Mr. Culpepper. Get it? Pepper? Yeah. The pepper he uses for his special hot sauce only grows inside the haunted temple of lost souls. Nothing foreboding about that title. And what's that pepper called again? And El Habanero de Mucho Gusto is what makes my sauce the greatest hot sauce in the world. Yeah, that. Shaggy and Scooby want to make a special chili of their own, and they need that pepper for it. So the guy who totally did it gives them a map and tells them they can use his supplies down by the river. Only downside is that his camp has been ravaged by jungle animals. Then we're thrown into the game. Wow, look at how small that bridge is. Shaggy and Scooby are giants. But now here's where the game resembles Horror of the High Seas. You move across the screen and grab objects to distract all the animals. If you fail to deal with one, it scares you and causes your scare meter to go up. If it fully fills, it's game over. Thankfully you can save, but your meter will be retained wherever it is. So some of the animals can be dealt with in one way, but others can be dealt with in one of two ways. Such as this snake, which you can either defeat with a drum or a frying pan. And you can either use a hammock or knock this rock down to keep a jaguar from coming out of its cave. It's an interesting first stage, but nothing especially big. Though it can be hard to tell where the safe spaces to use items are. If you get too close to an animal, it'll hurt you. But anyway, we take the supplies and head off in a boat. Look at that totally inconspicuous statue. I sure hope it isn't alive. Oh, it's alive. Why you see that, buddy? Then I'll take those over that Mayan mayhem any day. Hey, he said the title. Kinda. So then we get our next minigame and oh. Oh no. No, 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 no. I can't do this again. No, I can't. I can't do this. I refuse. I swore never to touch Haunts for the Holidays again because of that accursed rowing stage. Review's over. I'm not doing this again. Come on, we were enjoying that. Sorry, restless spirits of which I share my domain. I just can't do it anymore. Would you do it for a Lucy snack? Come again? I said, would you do it for a Lucy snack? So surprisingly, this isn't nearly as hard as the stage from Haunts for the Holidays. It's significantly shorter and the obstacles are easier to avoid. Though you do have to time your underwater ducks carefully. You can't control when you go back up. I also couldn't figure out how to avoid the Mayan mayhem whenever it pops out from a bush. Going underwater didn't seem to help. If there is a way to do it, I don't know it. But anyway, we land on an island and the monster destroys our boat. That brings us to the end of episode 1. Not bad so far. But let's see how episode 2 follows it. This is Creepy Cave Cave-In, which is a bit redundant. <laughs> Look! A cave? Yeah, a cave! Let's hide in there! We just have to find a way to get past that Mayan mayhem! 
It's Mayan monster mayhem, gosh. So the next stage is really amusing. The monster is in the jungle, so you have to carefully navigate while also luring it out. You get coconuts from this tree, which you can then throw in the water to distract the monster. You can even get more coconuts after collecting them the first time. Now here's a part I really hate. You have to remove this snake from the cave entrance, and you can do so in one of two ways. You can either launch it or charm it. Hey, that vine turned into a rope. But look how happy the snake is when you charm it with the flute. Why do you have to knock this stone over and crush it? Ugh, my empathy for animals really makes me hate this scene. But once we're in the cave, we get an interesting stage that isn't quite like anything we saw in the other games. We have to navigate a series of holes that lead us to different places, grabbing items and using them to our advantage. It can take a bit longer to finish than your usual level, so make sure you keep track of where you are. It's a lot of going in and out of holes, and dealing with these eyeball monsters. Guess they got tired of bothering Junior Asparagus. But once we're out, we meet suspect number two, Katrina Badfellow. Yeah, that name is also a little on the nose. They made her look as evil as possible. Eh, I don't buy it. She's trying to make an archaeological discovery, so she has a motive of her own. But if you start suspecting her, she basically confirms Culpepper did it by saying she knows all the local plant life and hasn't heard of the El Habanero de Mucho Gusto. Yeah, I know Scooby-Doo wasn't exactly known for its unpredictable villains, but come on. Now you get another interesting stage where you scale a wall to exit as Shaggy. Once you get out, you have to dig as Scooby, but you might find a dead body. Hey Scoob, it's just a bunch of bones. You're a dog, do the math. But you actually dig up the space beneath this rock so you can zoom over it. Then you find the ancient city of Tikal, which confirms that we're in Guatemala. In addition, the next episode is called Trouble in Tikal. So after hearing the monster, Shaggy and Scooby run, but accidentally trip over a wire. They find that the creepy sounds were actually coming from a stereo, which is highly suspicious. Hmm, I wonder if the stereo happens to be covered in hot sauce, hmm? Who do you think put it here? I don't know. Hmm, maybe if I take it apart. Uh, like, thanks, man. Yeah! Okay, that was funny. Good old Scooby-Doo humor. So now we're faced with an even bigger stage where we walk in and out of holes. It took me a while to navigate. This episode is the longest of the four, so make sure you keep saving. Watch the plants, too. If they ruffle, that means the monster's inside. The stationary ones have switches inside, but I don't know. Didn't we learn our lesson about pulling random levers last time? All right. You have to find clever ways to activate switches, and you even have to move this big block around to make a path for yourself. This is a creative level, but it does drag on a little. Though I like the ending puzzle where you have to walk across all these pieces of an image to highlight them. So once we're through, we meet another suspect. He's literally not suspicious at all. Yeah, we can pretty much forget about him. He's a tour guide named Carlos. He says that business is booming with the monster around, so that's something of a motive. But once again, he hasn't heard of the pepper. Come on, at least try to convince us it's someone besides Cole Pepper. But to get to the Temple of Lost Souls, we have to ascend this staircase. Unfortunately, it's the most dangerous staircase in existence. There are traps everywhere, so you have to be quick if you want to avoid them. Sometimes, if you move in the wrong direction, you have no choice but to take a hit. That makes saving a real risk because you might corner yourself in a bad position. Imagine beating the massive section before this and having to start from the very beginning again. It's a pain, but not the worst stage in existence. We already played that in Haunts for the Holidays. But once we reach the top, we move on to the final episode. Let's get ready to stop this monster once and for all in the Temple of Lost Souls. Great starting line here. Wow! I can't believe you and I traveled all the way to Guatemala to find the hottest hot pepper in the world just so we could make some really great chili. You're right, I can believe it. So then we enter the temple and the first thing we see is a dead Indiana Jones. Not sure why that was such a big trend in fiction for a time, but actually pretty much everything hurts you in here. <laughs> disgusting dead guy! <laughs> Yeah, it's a challenge. I find it funny that you can get past these scorpions by just throwing a blanket over them. What we can't see can't hurt us, Scoob! It's tough, but makes for a fitting sprint to the finish. Then you finally find the peppers, but they're made of plastic. Wow, it's almost as if we were lied to about them. But now it's time to catch the monster. Like in Horror of the High Seas, you use things around the area to build a trap. 
This area has some interesting elements to it as well, such as this row of tiles you have to reflect light onto. But what's most interesting is your ability to go under these stones and pop out from underneath them. First you use this mechanic to reach a rope that's stuck under a stone, but we'll be back soon. Once you make the trap, the monster shows up, but you have to move it all the way over. You do this by popping out from tiles behind it to light its butt on fire. This makes it jump forward until it lands in the trap. I gotta say, this is a creative way to take out the monster. Not a bad finisher to this. But now it's time to take off the mask and find out who the Mayan monster mayhem really is. And it's- wait, it's Katrina? Oh wow, I'm amazed. I genuinely didn't think they were going to go that route. I- I don't know what to say. That was actually really unpredictable. I can't believe they actually- nah, it's actually Culpepper. Of course it is. Literally, who else would it have been? He made up the legend about the pepper to sell his hot sauce. You mean Scoob and I came all the way to Central America for nothing? I wouldn't be too sure about that, Shaggy. Yep, we have an additional twist. By complete coincidence, we found an old recipe for ancient Mayan chili. So they make it around a campfire and everyone has a good time. That brings us to the end of Mayan Monster Mayhem. So... What do we think about this one? Well, I appreciate the creativity that went into many of the stages. Some of them can be a little tough to get through, but you'll manage eventually. The setting is cool and the environments are fun to go through too. The animation and acting are also true to the show, which adds another layer of enjoyment. Overall, not bad. Now, after having played all three of the games in this format, I gotta say the best one was by far Horror of the High Seas. It was challenging, but never too over the top. Once you figured out what to do, you can manage pretty fairly. Not to mention it was the only one without a super obvious culprit. Sure, you found out who it was after finding the scuba gear, but that was right before the final stage, so it wasn't too bad. Still, these games are good relics from the early 2000s, and it's a real pleasure to go back and revisit them. If you like Scooby-Doo, you'll probably enjoy these. They're really fun, and it's always nice to play through them again. At the end of the day, what more is there to say other than... Scooby-Dooby-Doo! So anyway, be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter and Twitter. Uh-oh, midnight. Now's the time. I, uh, my head's starting to hurt. Let's see what's going to happen. Uh, ah! No idea what just happened, but my head really hurts. Oh well, time to check the footage and see what happened. Alright, here we- Hey, what the heck? What do you mean it's just a blank screen? Well, I guess whatever entity's overtaking my mind every night doesn't want me to know what's going on. Oh well, I'll worry about that some other time. For now, thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter and Twitch, which are linked in the description below, and tune in to the next installment. Thank you for joining me, I will see you in the next memory. Oh, Scooby Dooby Doo went to a Mayan temple to find a spicy pepper. The Mayan monster mayhem really wanted to eat him, but it was actually Mr. Culpepper. Oh, now they have the recipe to make lots of chili. Why did I write this stupid song? I feel really silly.